I am a brilliant inventor. I have invented a new bed for hospitals that I claim will reduce the incidence of pressure ulcers. So I go to a hospital to try to sell it. Last year at that hospital, 8.37% of the patients who were bedridden for a day or more developed pressure ulcers. And I claim my new bed is going to reduce that number. And the hospital says, really, Eric, prove it. All right, so I have to prove it. I want to find a well-founded study in which I can prove this. And to do this, I'm going to do an experiment. In my experiment, I'm going to need two groups of people. A test group. They're going to be people bedridden in Eric's new bed. That's my test group, because they're trying something new. And my control group are the people who are bedridden in the traditional bed the old bed that the hospital has been using. So as the hospital have patients who are going to need to be in bed for a day or more, we're going to randomly assign some of them to be in the test group, some of them to be in the control group. And the question is, how many people do I need to have in my sample? Because more people is going to take longer to do the study. It's going to cost more money. It's going to be a lot more work. So how big does the sample size have to be? And to do that, we're going to do what's called a power analysis. Now, this kind of a study would be what kind of statistical test? Well, I'm looking at a percentage, which is really the same as a proportion. I'm looking at two different groups, my test group and my control group. So I'm really looking at a two proportions test. I'm going to have to do what's called a power analysis on a two proportions test to find the sample size. First question is going to be my confidence level. Let's work at 95% confidence. All right, what are my null and alternative hypotheses? Well, Eric, the inventor of the new bed, is claiming that it's going to reduce the incidence of pressure ulcers. So I claim that the proportion of people who get pressure ulcers in my bed, in the test group, will be less than the proportion who get pressure ulcers in the traditional bed, in the control group. So that's an alternative hypothesis, that the proportion in the test group who get pressure ulcers is less than the proportion in the control group. Of course, the null hypothesis is going to be the same, but with an equal sign. Excellent. We've got our null. We've got our alternative. We're doing great. Now, we have to start to talk about power. Power, remember confidence or significance has to do with a type 1 error. When we work at 95% confidence, we are saying that there is a 95% chance that this experiment will avoid a type 1 error which is where you reject a true null. The null is true, but you accidentally get results so far apart from the null that you reject the null. Power is about a type 2 error. It's the percentage chance that you avoid a type 2 error, which is where you fail to reject a false null. So the null is actually false. There really would be a difference between the two groups, but our experiment isn't sensitive enough to detect that difference. So we are going to want to work at a power. We're going to choose a power, the probability of avoiding that. But power is a little more complicated because it depends on how big a difference you want to measure. If you're looking for tiny little differences, you're going to need a huge sample size. If you're looking for big differences, you won't need as big a sample size. So let's pick something. The most common power is 80%. So we're going to say we want an 80% power level meaning there's going to be an 80% chance that we avoid a type 2 error if the difference is at least, how big should the difference be? Well, last year, 8.37% of patients who were bedridden over a day developed pressure ulcers. Let's say I think that there's going to be a reduction of at least half a percent. So if the difference is at least 0.5%, which is the same as 0.5%, zero zero five if we write that as a decimal everyone agree all right so we're ready to do our power analysis now so we're going to go to stat and this time we're not going to basic statistics we're going to power and sample size we've used that before to do sample size for estimation but this is a hypothesis test so we're looking for the test we would be doing which is a two proportions test so now, this asks us for certain questions. Sample size, I don't want to fill out. That's what I'm looking for. My baseline proportion is what the historic number is, the 8.37%. But remember, I need to enter it as a proportion, not a percent. So I'm going to say 0 0.0837. I wanted to work at 80% power. Again, 
Let's put that in as a proportion, as a decimal, not as a percent, 0.8. And my comparison proportion, if I want to reduce this by half a percent, I'm going to reduce that by half a percent. What is half a percent less? 8.37 minus a half is what? 7.87%. So this is going to be 0 0.0787. Everyone follow how I got that? I subtracted my 0 0.005 from my 0 0.0837. And that's how I got this. Let me click on Options. My alternative hypothesis in this case, I see is a less than, so I'm going to change that to less than. And my significance level is 0.05, because I wanted to work at 95%. I'm going to say OK and OK. And we do a power analysis, and it turns out that if I want to find a half a percent difference, I'm going to need a sample size of 36,900. And this is even worse than you think, because it's in each group. I'm going to need 36,900 people in the test group and 36,900 people in the control group. That's not realistic. I cannot get 40,000 people or 37,000 people in each group without this experiment taking me decades. Not at one hospital. Maybe if I did it across the entire United States, I could, but I don't have that kind of money. So I'm going to have to use a larger difference. I'm not going to be able to do a one-half percent difference. So what if... I were only looking for a 3% difference. In other words, my bed is going to have to be a lot better than the traditional bed, or I'm not going to have a very good chance of avoiding a type 2 error. So now, let me go back to stat, power and sample size, and we're going to say two proportions again. My baseline is the same, my power value is the same, but this time I'm going to go all the way down 3% less than this, 0 0.0. Five, three, seven. I should have the same alternative. I should have the same significance level. Those are okay. Okay. And you're going to see this reduces it to a much more manageable number of 878. But that's 878 in each group. I need eight. Whoops, 878 people in the test group and 878 people in the control group. Depending on how big the hospital is and how many patients they have in a year that are bedridden for at least a day, this could be something I could get done reasonably quickly, or at some hospitals, this again could take me several years. I might need more than one hospital, or I might need to be doing this at a very large hospital.